the sources for the kinds of media that um, are positive and that uh, strengthen us and empower us. I think the roadmap to those sources is the same roadmap to the people that empower you. Um, I think the same way that I would choose uh, my collective, my friends, my colleagues, those who I who I entrust to be in a safe space with in my personal life, um, those are the extensions. Uh, the, the media that I choose should be extensions of them. You know, good people surround surround themselves with good people. Birds of a feather flock together. All these, all these um, adages that that reflect that same mentality of. You know, hey, if, I, if you're a trusted source for me, you're someone who I believe in, you're someone who instills power in me, you're someone who fills me with hope, tell me something that you're reading. Tell me uh, where you get your news from. Tell me something that empowers you. Um, educate me through your, your, your own self-education and spread that to me. And then I think from those collaborations and that connectivity is how we expand out from 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 our internal to our external, we expand outwardly this ripple and web and network of hope that is impenetrable to despair. I always find that uh, we can generate hope if we generate a feeling of connection among people. And one other thing I've been experimenting is uh, retelling stories, not from an expert point of view, but more from um, a real heart point of view, like telling people Tell me your story and communicate with other people. Where I see the hope from where we are now is I think technology has brought us to a place where we're really questioning whether we're losing some of our humanity to technology. We're interrupting each other. We live in a culture where we're substituting connection for conversation, where we're, we're, we're on our email all day. We're not giving each other time parents are texting at breakfast, they're texting at dinner, they're not giving their children full attention, the children know it. When we work, we're emailing people in the next cubicle, we're ramping up the volume and the velocity of our emails to each other to the point that we're asking each other simpler questions and giving each other simpler answers just to be giving each other answers right away. And I, It's a bad situation, but the hope is really that people are starting to sense that something's gone amiss. It's not ironic for social networking to be you in front of a computer for two hours, you know, tagging people on photos that you don't know. Um, it should be giving people the tools to actually reclaim the social human experience in some way and, and, and letting them um, finally see each other in person, like going to a restaurant or going to a bar or having coffee and really going back to a place where technology and you meeting with people in a very human way are no longer incompatible but really actually support each other. It seems like it's a time of chaos in a lot of professions and, uh, and globally, worldwide and I actually think that chaos is also a time of change and where I see the hope coming out of this is that as structures reassemble themselves and fall apart, that there are there's youthful energy, there's um, inspiring uh, leaders that are taking new tools and creating new tools, and we have these global means of communication now that can bring diverse peoples together together to solve a lot of our problems. And although it can seem frightening at first because of how many people there are um, and how many ways we can hear from them that it's because of that connection that we're breaking down uh, barriers we self-impose barriers about place and ethnicity and uh, sexuality that now um, there's a bigger voice and we can find new solutions. I find hope in people who, t who look beyond these standard frameworks of assumption and find greater complexity. When you find greater complexity uh, than that which is, for example, articulated by politicians, you can find something other than uh, turmoil, you can find something other than a dire situation. You can actually find a reason for going forward and hoping for the future. There are many avenues for hope, and I think one that is maybe a common thread is the fundamental principles that we know about ethics. Um, de democratic decision making, equity, equal voice, and if we can keep those fundamentals and bring them 
to every new media and our applications of media, we're going to be on the right track no matter what comes next. I, I enjoy just the physicalness of holding a newspaper, opening it up, and seeing a story that's been crafted for me that has a beginning, middle, and end, knowing that they are well-thought, um, talented writers who crafted the full story for me. Um, and so I like that aspect of having news that is comprehensive, that is well-researched, that is well-written. Um, and therefore, social media is a little bit of a struggle because it's the fast pace of everything that's happening all at once. So many voices going on at once that I don't really know which one I should listen to, which one I should pay attention to, which one has actually more credence than others. Um, so that's a little scary. You know, one of the things in life, the nature of life, is that when things fall apart, they make a lot of noise. And when things come together, they're often very quiet. Both things happen all the time. If we don't still ourselves to listen for all of life, we have what we have now, which is a culture and a media addicted to the drama of how things fall apart. And we need a balanced reporting from the whole, not to ignore how things fall apart, but to give equal attention to the light in everything and how things come together. Uh, one thing I really have hope for the media is that it's so organically driven now by the youth. Uh, the content we want is what gets out there. It's not controlled by the older generation or what the corporation wants. And I feel like that's the stages we're moving in. It's what people want now. And that's what I hope to continue in the future. I see the hope in two, pl in two places, in two ways I find hope. One is in young people uh, as the future. And second, uh, in the multiplicity of ways that people can access the media now, much more so than before. First, young people. I think um, I work with a lot of young people, whether they're in, in the United States or around the world through my work with the UN in planning the Global Youth Leadership Summit, where I talk to young people about what they want to do and uh, how they can change and some might say save the world. And, um, and it's important because the media is going to be a critical part of whatever it is that they want to do, and they recognize that. Um, what they're, many of them are involved with is trying to find a way to um, expand the number of media outlets, media opportunities that there are out there. I think that's important. I feel hopeful in my field, which is the media in China, I think especially social media tools, uh, it's so hopeful to bring us uh, a much free and open media environment. And that's why I'm here. And I also want to share this message with the reporters in the rest of the world. And my hope is that we use the media on a broader scale to tell the stories that are not being told, the stories in the community that are changing lives, uh, that are not based in fear and not focusing on um, terror. Terror is there, fear is there, I am acknowledging that, but I also think there's a platform that we're missing. We're missing a huge scope. And so with groups like this that gather to talk about like minds and gathering our sources and um, our passions, we can make a difference. So keep telling the stories that matter and make good choices. We are in a journalistic renaissance in which um, advocate journalists, much like in the early democracy of America, are increasing in importance and um, are able to impel social change through journalistic truth. So I think that any worry about the future of journalism is only a worry about a disintegrating model that only reduce the power of the fourth estate and I think we're getting to a more powerful place wherein we can impel positive change. I've never lost hope so for me I've seen what's gone on with the media as just part of a long evolution and I think uh, the internet is very young I think that um, we are perhaps on information overload, but I think that will sort itself out through almost natural selection. 
and I feel that those of us who want to can find our own truths and um, I feel actually very positive. The hope I see through the use of media is I can begin to help people become more and more comfortable talking about a hot button issue like race and ethnic relations in a non-confrontational and I call it hopeful way. And the more I engage people in these types of conversations through oral histories, through interviews on television and radio programs, through training young people in telling their story and also getting uh, the stories of elders and knowing that those are going to be presented through the media, the more comfortable people become in realizing that there can be a safe space for talking about our humanity. Really, I think a lot of what's going on right now is boomers losing power and freaking out, but that over time, when the boomers finally step off the stage, uh, the next generation is going to demonstrate that this was certainly an epical technological change, but that the human species has not been damaged.